The Romans built some of the most incredible structures of the ancient world, but Portus is perhaps one of the most astounding of all their feats, especially since the fate of the empire relied on the artificial port's construction. With on Portus, the Roman Empire would have faced a major hiccup in its growth. Before you enjoy the incredible story of Rome's Portus, remember to subscribe to our channel and smash the like button. If you're interested in early access to videos and live chats with the creator of Intrigued Mind, consider subscribing to our Patreon. Your support will greatly help us keep the channel producing more intriguing content. Now, back to the story. During the Imperial period, the emperors of Rome faced tremendous pressure to grow and expand the empire's reach. But, to grow the boundaries of the empire, the heart of the empire, the city of Rome, had to grow with it. Rome had been conquering territories around the Mediterranean for the past two centuries before they built Portus. These territories, particularly the port cities in Egypt, North Africa, and the island of Sicily, were some of Rome's most valuable assets. They provided the empire with massive opportunities to create not only an empire of land, but an empire of trade, which the Romans could control to benefit them as much as possible. The most valuable import the ravenous city needed was grain, and these two areas produced more grain than most of the rest of the empire. Plus, they were very close to the Italian peninsula. There was only one problem. Rome lacked a large enough port to handle high concentrations of goods imported from Africa. In other words, Rome needed a port to handle the many trade vessels from their southern territories, and their original port, called Ostia, couldn't handle it. In modern Rome, Ostia is the port tourists and history buffs come to see. Ostia was the original port Rome built to manage the rapid growth of the late Republic and early Imperial periods. It was also a river port, and had all the problems a river port has, such as uneven depth and siltification. Given these issues, the Romans didn't want to expand an already problematic harbor, especially since there was little room for expansion to begin with. Enter Emperor Claudius. Claudius ruled Rome from 41 CE to 54 CE. He was described as crippled by many writers, making Claudius, like his young empire, have a lot to prove. During his 13-year reign, Claudius started numerous construction projects, invasions, and other empire-ish things. One of his major projects was Portus. To start the project, Claudius ordered vast teams of Roman engineers, builders, and of course, slaves, to build two curved moles projecting into the sea around a natural bay along the coastline. The moles were designed to prevent strong waves from steering ships into the bay shoreline. To help guide ships towards the harbor, Claudius had a lighthouse built on a small island nestled between the two moles. Claudius' harbor was famous throughout the empire. Several ancient Roman coins depict the glorious construction of the original Portus, showing us modern folk how much this port meant to the empire and its governors. Ancient writers also mention the port, often calling it Portus Ostiensis Augusti, after the north and south harbors, Augusti being the bay-shaped harbor and Ostia being the old harbor along the Tiber. The Via Portuensis, a 24-kilometer long road, connected the port to the city of Rome. The Claudian harbor was completed around 62 CE, during the reign of Emperor Nero. For a few decades, the harbors of Rome stayed virtually the same, until a new emperor named Trajan came along and changed everything. By sheer volume of accomplishments alone, Trajan was one of the most successful Roman emperors in history. Under his leadership, Rome saw itself expand to its geographical and architectural peaks. In fact, many of the iconic monuments in modern Rome were constructed on Trajan's behalf, such as Trajan's Column, Trajan's Forum, and the first shopping mall in history, Trajan's Market. Portus is one of Trajan's lesser-known projects, but it is nonetheless incredible. As mentioned before, Trajan was a conquering emperor who constantly brought droves of wealth to the Roman Empire in the form of new territories and captured property. He felt the pressure to build even more than Claudius, and in order to create Trajan's grand vision of Rome, the city needed grain and building supplies, mainly building materials, which the Claudian harbor had failed to accommodate over the decades. Due to its proximity to the bay, the Claudian harbor and all its ships were exposed to storms that hit the Roman coast. Many Romans documented this issue in various writings. Roman writer Tacitus wrote in his historical work Annals that storms had destroyed 200 ships in the Claudian harbor over the years. Based on Tacitus's account, this was clearly a significant problem for the Claudian version of Portus. Trajan decided to build a harbor farther inland and ordered the construction of a massive hexagonal basin that enclosed almost 100 acres. Once the far safer harbor was complete, Portus was lined with columned warehouses to store everything the traders imported and exported through Rome. While the warehouses were magnificent structures, they were far from mere fancy buildings and were designed specifically for storing perishable goods. Archaeologists have since discovered that these structures were built with ventilation and temperature regulation technology to keep products like grain fresh until transportation. When the goods needed to be transported into the city, they could use the Via Portuensis, but there were also enormous canals dug that led to Ossita and then the Tiber, giving the trader easy access to the city and the opportunities it held. 
For some 400 years, from the late 2nd century AD into the 5th and 6th centuries, this 100-yard wide, 90-meter canal was used to ship goods from all over the empire to Rome. Over time, emperors Hadrian and Antonius Pius constructed even larger warehouses, some of which archaeologists believe stood multiple stories high. These vast storage structures were built along Trajan's hexagonal harbor and later modified by Septimius Severus, who ended up naming the warehouses after himself, despite not being the original patron. In addition, there was a massive imperial palace, an amphitheater, and supporting buildings all constructed at Portus. For perspective, archaeologists estimate that the two conjoined harbors could host around 350 ships at any time. As a whole, the Claudian harbor consumed about 170 acres. This includes the two moles and the island where the lighthouse stood. Trajan's extension, by comparison, is smaller than Claudius's original structure at 97 acres, but did its job of supplying the need for more docking space. Some estimates even claim that Trajan's harbor alone could hold 200 ships at any time. By modern standards, this may not seem like much, but considering this was 2,000 years ago and this was one city, the number is quite impressive. But even with all the time and effort put into its construction and its importance to the city of Rome, Portus eventually fell to ruin. In 476 CE, the Western Roman Empire and Rome itself fell to invading Ostrogoths. It was long believed that the port was destroyed under the Ostrogoths themselves. However, the prevailing theory now is that the port began to be seen as a threat to the remaining Eastern or Byzantine Empire. As they fought to retake Rome in the 6th century, they decided it was more of a detriment than a benefit to the city and systematically destroyed the massive complex. The dismantling of Portus was so complete, there remains few traces of its very existence. After they destroyed Portus, later Romans abandoned the old site and the earth consumed the grounds. From an archaeological standpoint, this process seemed to happen overnight. Since Portus is right in the water, the site gradually filled with sediment and silt via storms and the occasional tsunami. The Claudian Harbor is covered in grass, though the remains of some warehouse structures still exist. The Trajanic Harbor is now a hexagonal shaped lake filled with reeds, forever cut off from the bay it was connected to in ancient times. The distance between the lake and the ocean is now a little over a mile, though the distance changes with the tide and rain. Besides its obviously man-made shape, you would never know the lake was once the greatest harbor in Rome. Fittingly, it is located at the end of a runway for Rome's Fiumicino International Airport, now the major port for Rome. Historians will never agree on which Roman structure is the greatest, but they all agree the Portus is one of them. The 1st and 2nd century Romans expanded their reach faster and more efficiently than any other ancient empire. When there was a problem, like not having a large enough harbor to handle grain imports, they solved it, no matter how impossible it seemed. Today, even the most avid Roman history fans often give more attention to Ostia, calling it the Port of Rome. Visitors can see the glorious remains of tall warehouses, meeting rooms where ship guilds met to discuss business, the Forum, and the Capitoline Temple. Meanwhile, the far more impressive Portus is long gone. The only significant or iconic piece of the Portus left for layman's eyes is Trajan's hexagonal lake, which is hard to fully appreciate from the ground. Most photographs taken of Trajan's forgotten harbor are from an aerial view. The dilapidated state of Trajan's harbor and the fact that it isn't owned by the public gives the impression that it was less significant than Ostia. In reality, Ostia was the inferior port, plagued by river flooding and storms more so than the Portus, certainly after Trajan's expansion. But that is history for you. Sometimes we do not always remember the most incredible things that happened in our past, but just the things we can most easily see. Portus is mostly gone, but thanks to modern science and technology, we can appreciate it for the marvel it was back when Rome ruled the Mediterranean. For more videos on the most amazing forgotten parts of our history, be sure to subscribe to the Intrigued Mind channel, like the video, and leave your suggestions in the comments below.